Well, hey there. I'm going to do a video today regarding an, an answer to this question. Are all attorneys procrastinators? And the answer is no. That's an easy one. But we're going to talk about some of the the areas where you might see comments online from people who are currently working in the legal field who um, are working for somebody who is a major procrastinator and causes a lot of undue stress or chaos because of it. And so one of the things I always recommend is I teach my students actually the questions to ask in an interview so you get an understanding of who this person is that you're interviewing with and how they work because that will affect you personally and it could affect your personal life and uh, just because the way they work is is not organized so let's talk about some of the areas that I have found uh, over the 30 years where some attorneys are falling down and others have it all together and everything in between okay so let's talk about one area preparing for a trial or it could be as simple as preparing for a client to come in and sign some documents are those documents ready did the attorney give you a heads up that those documents were needed? I have been in a situation working uh, in the estate planning field where you do living wills, you do a simple will, you do a healthcare directive and a durable power of attorney. Those are four of the common documents when you work in estate planning law that you have to have ready for the client when they come in to sign the documents. The attorney can get a lot of information on the phone, which will give you a head start to get those documents ready before the clients walk in the door, which is very nice because you want to proofread those documents. Same as getting ready for a trial. You don't want to wait until right before the trial is going to occur, say two days before or three days before, to be in touch with certain people that are witnesses to they have to appear and documents you have to have ready maybe notebooks everything you have to pull together you 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 will be less stressed when you have advance notice but there are personalities in the law field attorneys who prefer to uh, cram two days before the trial is going to start and get ready for it. There are other attorneys who prepare all the way along the whole timeline before the trial ever occurs. And sometimes it never happens because the case settles. It just, um, they work out a deal and it never goes to trial. But we're preparing way ahead of time for that event. And yeah, it's great if it settles, but it, sometimes it doesn't. And so you've got the personality who's super organized, the A personality, and then everything in between and on the other end of the spectrum is the person who is the crammer, the one who is last minute, the procrastinator. And that can cause a lot of stress. It's not a person I prefer to work with. Um, it, you know, I don't, I don't feel that's a, you know, an enjoyable work day. Honestly, some things happen where it's last minute that you didn't expect, but for the things you know that are going to occur, you can get ready for them. So that's number one. Number two relates to this. It's time management. So if there is a complaint that has to be written by the attorney, they may need a reminder. They may ask you to remind them and then you put that on the calendar. But there are people who prefer and feel that they can, they perform better when they do things at the last minute. I, I would debate that, you know, even if you did it a week out, you could get it done and get that stress off, okay? Um, no, do I like to work that way? No. And so when I'm in an interview, I'm gonna find out 
what their work style is like because that impacts me as the new employee. Okay, so remember that. Um, some attorneys, this is number three, have to track their time. And that means they have a sheet and they'll put the client name and how long they worked on a specific task. And that will go on an invoice that gets sent to the client. So sometimes paralegals, as paralegals, we have to track our time as well. I've known attorneys who um, lost track of their time and asked me, like, what, what did we talk about that day, you know, and tried to re remember what they worked on for the day. That's not a good way to do it. And so while they're working on a task, it's, it's like developing habits for us too. If we have to track our time as paralegals, then we have to have that sheet either on the computer, you know, in Word or wherever it is, and or a hard copy in front of us where we're writing it down. But it's far easier to type it in than to write it down and then type it in. Okay, that's double work. So um, putting that information down, what did I do today? It's a good proof of what you did all day too. Besides your to-do list, it's good if you have something like that. Is a it's a play-by-play -play of your whole day. Um, so they they are to track their time. Most attorneys will be doing that because they they get paid by uh, in many different ways. They could get paid hourly. They could get paid flat fee. Or if they work in personal injury, for instance, they'll get a percentage of what they win for that client. That's just the way that works, okay? Um, so number three is, it, you know, it's all about their time. Time is money for the attorney. Number four, organizing their workspace. You'll see attorneys who are just their desk is totally chaotic and others where it's in piles and they know where everything is or they have folders on their desk in some type of contraption that where they can pull that out and know where they are on each case and those are just copies in there they're never originals in there um, but that's you'll see all of it so it's rare that you're going to interview with the attorney in their office but if you get a chance to, if that's what happens, you'll get to see how they work. But most of the time you're meeting in a conference room, and so you don't get to see that. And I've been asked to organize somebody's desk, and we sat there for two hours organizing the desk, making a list of everything that's there. And within um, a few days, that desk was chaotic again because obviously that person liked to work that way because it always went back to that. They couldn't maintain it. All right, so number, let's see, five. The client calls and the attorney knows exactly where they are on each case. And that can be done by having client folders, like temporary client folders that has copies in it and that the latest document that was filed will be on the top and they can just say yes we just filed this on whatever date it was and um, or they may have to call that person back and the attorney will meet with you and say where are we on this case so they can have an update for that client. It would be great if they, they didn't have to call the client back but that's that's just the way it goes and it gives, it buys them a little more time to give that answer some attorneys are you know they're not going to remember every single case they're working on um, and where they are with each case you can't commit all that to memory so what most attorneys understand is that we as paralegals know what's going on with each case and so we have systems in place to document that. Not just looking in the file, but we, we know as paralegals because we're in the cases all day long. So um, 
systems in place like a to-do list and a calendar help us greatly. There are more systems to be put in place so that when we're asked, well, where are we with this case? What's, what's the next step that you and the attorney will talk about it and you'll have that all out there so you're not stressing over it. But some law firms do not have anything like that in place. And then what happens is it's chaotic in that law firm. So again, I prefer to work with people who are organized. Okay, so we have number six. Do most attorneys procrastinate all day long and wait until three or four o'clock to begin the workday? No, most attorneys do not do that. Some do, some do. But I, again, prefer to work with somebody who's organ more organized and who I help stay organized and who comes in at nine o'clock or so and that by coming in at nine o'clock, I've had a good 30 minutes or maybe an hour to myself to look over my workload and be able to say to the attorney, because they'll come in and ask, we're, you know, what we're doing for that day and do you want me to continue working on that? And, uh, and so we know. I prefer to work with somebody like that than somebody who's not engaged in that everyday process. Um, but some people, if they're not partners in the firm, and even if they are, uh, they are meeting with other attorneys, they're meeting with clients, and then they find that the day is already gone. And there's sometimes good reason why their day and doing the work they had scheduled isn't getting on that to-do list or they're not started on it until two, three o'clock, okay? So yes, sometimes there's good reason for that too. So that is it, yes, some, some people are procrastinators, just like us, we have to, I have to fight against that and my work would, you know, I wouldn't be employed if I worked like that. So I have to be highly organized at work, they expect that of me, um, that's the reputation that I've built and so that's what I want and I wanna work like that because I don't leave at night stressed out and I'm not stressed out on Friday night and any, attorney that wants to have a personal life will work that way and you don't want to work for somebody who is working in a chaotic environment because you'll go home stressed out and you will leave on Friday night stressed out and your weekend won't be enjoyable you want to work for people who have their act together and are organized at every step of the way Okay? And you can make that choice by interviewing properly. So just a heads up, the Paralegal Career Secrets Black Book is coming out soon. Stay tuned for that. That's going to be a free PDF. Um, it will give you things to be aware of for the legal field and things to beware of. Okay, Tips for you as the entry-level paralegal. Be sure to go over to the website, Paralegal Coffee Talk, I'll put a link below, and look at the 19 alternative paralegal careers list. And also, a free chapter of my book is available there, or you can click the tab for the legal break-in book and grab a copy from Amazon there, but you can click the tab for that. Um, so when you click on the 19 alternative paralegal careers list it'll ask you to sign up do that because it'll take you to a hub where you'll see videos and a free chapter of my book there it's all there for you in the hub and uh, i want you to avail yourself of that okay so paralegalcoffeetalk.com and then look for 19 and the last thing is be sure that while you're on the website, you look for the tab Paralegal Inner Circle Class. That class is launching January 15th, less than a month away, just giving you a heads up, okay? So have a great day. Any questions, comments, post them below, and I'll talk to you in the next video.